when practicing this concerto, try to be aware of what the piano is playing. If you know which notes you're playing on, you don't need a teacher to tell you go towards the D or towards the B. You can make an authentic interpretation of yourself. So, E minor, F sharp minor for the people out there with perfect pitch. Which note does not belong to the chord? Which note is strange to the harmony? The C. That's why I believe we should not play the B too strong. Because you won't have more space to go forward. So be strong inside. But play this B with elegance. Let it run the same. We go to the higher note. And please, never, and forgive me, I have to show the wrong way because I hear it all the time. If the C has an unintended accent, you won't have a chance to show the appoggiatura on the D. We have no accompaniment exactly on these parts. I try to think of a, an unspoken harmony, implicit harmony. For instance, Otelo, I imagine we are playing E major and A does not belong to the chord. On the A is the tension, on the G sharp, the release. There's a famous book you've probably heard of, Versuch einer gründlichen Violinschule by Leopold Mozart. On this book, Professor Mozart says something I like very much about piano. When playing quiet, your piano should have the same quality as your forte. He dislikes very much when people take the bow with two fingers, he says, and they play like this. So for him, this is no piano. Piano should have the same tone quality as forte. So. This will be forte, less, in simple words, narrow vibrato, less bow speed, and less bow weight. That's a piano with quality. I think this book by Leopold Mozart is relevant. It's not expensive and you will find it probably in every library in any university of music. If you know you will need time to play a climax, an important note, a couple of bars prior, we shall accelerate a tiny bit. So... <laughs> exaggerating a tiny bit, but if you want to show this, this F, there's of course a limit, a limitation in forte. Sometimes you cannot play louder than the maximum you can give. You cannot vibrate wider than the widest vibrato. Your third and last resource is the time. When something's important would take more time so people can understand this is the climax and the most important part of our speech. And music is a speech in a way. Later on when playing the triplets, we try to imagine what's happening with the harmony. And on the piano, there is not much happening. This is just a D minor chord. <laughs> the notes in between, the Wechselnoten, are not important. Playing these triplets with too much rubato is strange. I believe there is no need, no musical or harmonic reason to take time here. It makes no sense. The chromatic notes are more interesting. We take time to show them. Later on, when the music is not important, not interesting, we 
play a bit faster. When playing music of the classic period, we should not do this. But it happens to be okay for the romantic music. Alla breve, the same. Do not bite too much. But now, be gentleman or lady. Easy as a cake. Forte does not mean ugly. Forte means strong. Because I think the word loud has a slightly negative connotation. Loud is like noise. But forte, forte, is just strong. Now the question arises, where to play our accent? Where is the appoggiatura? The answer is in the piano part. Here's the most interesting note on this phrase, I believe. So we play towards the B sharp, or as it's written on this uh, music, C natural. And now do not play too, too, too intense. This is a tension release. This note belongs to the chord, this note doesn't. And now, please, not Baroque music. This small break in between would be easier for your left hand, but it's not what a singer would do. It's not easy, of course, but let me give it a try. Same. In simple words, a long note. If it's the end of a phrase, we play a diminuendo. If it's a connection note, we should not play diminuendo. A pity. And the short note afterwards, the Anschlussnote should not have an accent. Again, a pity. This part is here crazy difficult, of course, but we try to play leggero when we're playing piano. On the string very much, and later on we can play leggero on the mezzo piano or piano repetition. But otherwise we stay on the string. Many thanks for listening. See you next time. <laughs>